Elite Dangerous Odyssey, the newly hyped up DLC expansion recently released by Frontier Developments. And unfortunately, going by Steam and forum feedback, disappointedly a very palpable negative reaction to this release is felt throughout the community. One of the main topics of complaint is the new planet tech. I know this has been covered by many already, but I wanted to delve a little deeper and take you on a journey to popular sites in ED and compare these sites in Horizons to Odyssey. One of the beautiful things to experience in Elite Dangerous Horizons has always been the planets. The exquisite arrangement of features and detail enabling you to experience what is arguably a plausible representation of planetary bodies based on evidence-based mathematics. In one of FDEF's live streams, however, it had been said that the new tech in Odyssey is no longer relying purely on mathematics. Instead, it seems using repeating predetermined graphical patterns placed using procedurally generated algorithms. There is also a restricted height map that in all intents and purposes has ironed out most of the terrain we have come to love and enjoy in Horizons. FDEF have said the planet tech was recreated from the ground up in order to provide opportunities for future development, which the old tech could not provide. I guess this is because of the new engine that Odyssey now runs off, and the introduction of tenuous atmospheres. The possibility in the future, full atmospheric planetary bodies could be introduced. There's no denying the enormous effort that has gone into the new planet tech, but I suspect it simply was not ready for release, and required a little more time to cook. So, is the new planet rendering intended? A. Procedurally generation of environment malfunctioning. Neutron stars in Horizons have always been a spectacular viewing in Horizons. The light scattering looks great and feels menacing. In Odyssey, however, something seems to have drastically gone wrong and almost comical. This looks like someone shining a square torch or flashlight. The emissive lighting is way too bright too. The only positive I can take away from fleet carriers in Odyssey is the high fidelity they now have. But the lighting seems off to me. The gamma setting is way off, it's darker, including the artificial light, like the flashing hazard lights, etc. You think this close to a bright neutron star would illuminate the carrier more. Light diffraction in this case does not seem to be working as it should. Neither does the emissive lighting from artificial lighting. The Jameson crash site, a very heavy traffic place where commanders go to extract grade 5 encoded materials by using her lock to menu exploit. Instantly notable, you are able to differentiate terrain between Horizons and Odyssey. To me, it just doesn't feel natural in Odyssey. The noise graph used to determine terrain placement works well in Horizons. You get the seemingly randomness of surface details including an uneven landscape. We were told the noise graphs in Odyssey Alpha were placeholders for final release, which would be polished and fit together. We saw more scattering of rocks on planets in Odyssey Alpha, despite it being in a prototype state. I have not experienced the same amount of scattering seen in Horizons and Alpha in the full release of Odyssey. It was explained however the scattering was turned down, but I'm not sure why. The different scene in the terrain where the cross site is located is stark. In Horizons, the cross site feels foreboding, dark, and appears natural. It's also not easy to land near the cross ship either. In Odyssey, I'm able to land right next to the cross ship with ease due again to the flat terrain experienced with the new planet tech in Odyssey. Also, the crash cobra feels like it was placed rather than appearing natural, like it was inserted into a semi-dry piece of clay. The blending of objects, the natural terrain flow, does not seem optimised. The rocks and debris seem to have lost fidelity and colour shading. Dav's hope is now on the opposite side of the planet. 
This seems commonplace with other bases and starports throughout Odyssey. And there's another commonplace commander's visit to farm manufactured materials. It is also no longer next to a mountain. There is no heightened terrain to speak of at all. However, the base layout remains the same, but has better fidelity and detail. With Argoid site, there really isn't many changes to see here, except the planet terrain is slightly different. In Odyssey, they've even added green fog which adds a more sinister tone. Entering this door to an obstructed tunnel really demonstrates the difference in detail. I feel in Odyssey the light scattering is dull, and if you notice, the green materials is missing off the rocks. To me, it looks like lumpy clay. The scavengers have had a slight facelift, but ambient light, as experienced in most areas of Odyssey, is darker. I really don't mind the darkness so much, I think it introduces a more sinister tone. The design and functionality of the cargo machine inside remains the same. Maybe more fidelity to the graphic, but it's hard to tell. The great thing in Odyssey, however, is you can explore this machine on foot and get a much closer look. I really wish I knew what this machine was for. For many, we come to one of the biggest tragedies in Odyssey, the removal of the 50 km high mountain that once graced this planet, Nervi 3A. In Horizons, you can even see the mountain using the system map, but in Odyssey, it's all flattened out. Shame. The blue arrow here shows where the mountain should be.
This is the spectacular sight you are greeted with in Horizons. I find it majestic and awe-inspiring. Odyssey, not so much. A Guardian site. Again, the site has been moved to the opposite side of the planet. Again, the structures remain the same in both versions. I also found that the Sentinels will only appear when you're in an SRV. They will not appear if you're on foot. Not sure if this is a mistake or it's intentional. I was really hoping these bases would open up more to allow you to solve puzzles to gain access to structures buried beneath. But alas, there really isn't much to do here on foot. Although I do enjoy the views here. I hope this video doesn't come across as one of those really negative views about Odyssey. I am a huge fan of Elite Dangerous. I have been ever since I found out about it a few years ago. Although I am old enough, I didn't play it when it first came out in the 1980s. I do remember it on one of my cousin's computers. I had a little play with it, but it never really pulled my interest. Maybe too young. But for me, this is about the only game that I play. I am very passionate about this game and I want it to succeed. It's just a shame that I feel this current launch hasn't really gone as well as it should have, that it feels rushed. Yes, the game is playable and I have enjoyed playing the game. I mean, there's some amazing vistas that you can still visit. But again, it just seems lacking, lacking of content. There doesn't seem to be all that much to do. Yes, they've introduced PvP, but I'm not really a PvPer. They brought on foot mechanics. Great, I'm an explorer. I want to go and explore. But I really don't feel that they've really put much effort into exploration either. The biomes that you can encounter and scan don't seem to be that many. They're procedurally generated, of course. And this is really evident if you log out and log back in in front of a genome a biological life form, because they'll change positions. There doesn't seem to be much else to do. I do like visiting other planets and finding what I can discover. It does give me more reason to go visit planets. And although the game hasn't really come across well, it still won't stop me from playing. I'll continue playing it, I'll continue supporting it, because it's the only game that I play. I don't play any other games, for mostly because I just don't have the time. This planet is a favourite for those who like canyon racing. And although the terrain has had significant changes made, it is still possible to map canyon runs. I'm not a canyon racer, so can't really comment from a canyon racer's perspective, but the change doesn't seem all that bad to me.
One of the more notable changes made to the ships is the boost. The animation has significantly changed. In Horizon, it just seems more dramatic. There's more flair. In Odyssey, it just seems lackluster. What do you think? To close, I wanted to compare location and images shown on an ED livestream to those found in Odyssey. I was able to find the first location with ease, and although I arrived at night, you can still see the outlines of the terrain which matches those shown. The second location I couldn't find at all. There are three atmospheric planets in this system, but none had the terrain at the coordinates shown in the images. Does this give credence the planet tech is not working as designed? Anyways, thanks for watching, see you next time.